One of the major gaps that we have in the literature at this time is how to sequence therapies for patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Most of the studies that have been conducted have been real-world studies, they have limitations. The clinical trials have notable gaps in the fact that we don't really know what happens to patients once they're censored on a study, yet we're in this situation where we have five novel agents approved in this space. We have ibrutinib, we have acalabrutinib, idelalisib, duvalisib, and venetoclax. And so how to combine and how to sequence these agents is very important. We know from prospective data that if you give venetoclax after ibrutinib or idelalisib, that sequence works. You see responses at nearly 70%, the responses are durable. But when you look at the literature and try to find evidence about the opposite sequence, ibrutinib, for example, going to venetoclax, just a few patients, retrospective series, not a lot of data on follow-up. So that's an evidence gap. And in the clinic, patients really wanna know if you start me with venetoclax, can you transition to ibrutinib or acalabrutinib, and can I do well? So that was the rationale for this trial. So we recruited 31 centers from around the world. We partnered with the core registry as well as the UK CLL forum to put together a data set specifically of patients who discontinued venetoclax and then went on to something else. And the therapies that we were interested in looking at were BTK inhibitors, PI3K inhibitors, as well as cellular therapies. We broke down the groups to look at the reasons for prior discontinuation of other therapies, uh, as well as exposure to novel agents. And so what we did was we identified 326 patients who discontinued venetoclax again across 31 sites. So it's the largest discontinuation series of venetoclax treated patients. And then we started to focus in on the patients who received alternate therapies and those groups that we were most interested in. So the summary of the data is that we found out a lot about sequencing post venetoclax. And patients who'd never seen a BTK inhibitor before, BTK inhibitors were active. We saw high response rates and durable remissions. And when I say durable remissions, with follow-up of approximately 11 months, we saw a median PFS of 32 months for the sequence of ibrutinib following venetoclax or acalabrutinib following venetoclax. But when you had previously been exposed to these drugs, it was a totally different story. And the reason for discontinuation mattered. We found that patients who were previously intolerant to a BTK inhibitor did just fine when they went from venetoclax to another BTK inhibitor. But when they were previously resistant and went to a BTK inhibitor, we didn't find that out. We found actually that the responses were not durable, approximately four months. And we found a similar story for patients who went to a PI3K inhibitor, either idelalisib or duvalisib. And in that patient population, none of whom had seen that drug before or those, that class before, responses were not durable, approximately five months. We also looked at cellular therapies with very limited data, and we see activity for CAR T cells post venetoclax as well as allogeneic transplantation. So the summary of this abstract was, this is the largest series of patients who've discontinued VEN and gone on to a novel agent. And now we have a larger uh, and higher level of evidence to support the sequence of venetoclax to another novel agent, specifically a BTK inhibitor if you'd never seen one before. This is really important in terms of clinical decision making. It's important in terms of design of future clinical trials. And it provides guidance to clinicians in terms of how to sequence therapies, which is one of the biggest questions that we have to try to answer when we're dealing with agents that are active, but none of which, at least at this time, are curing the disease. So it's all about running a race across multiple lines of therapy, and this fills in a nice piece of the gap in the literature.